Hello, one and all. You are listening to episode 25 of the Wellesley Weekly Podcast, the show where I talk about anything and everything. My name is John, aka Wellesley, and coming up on today's show, I want to take you on a journey. You see, I've been a little stressed recently. I've got a lot of deadlines coming up at uni, and it's just getting to me a little bit. And the one thing that I do to try and relax is listen to music. I listen to a lot of music. And sometimes, songs just get stuck in my head for no good reason. Whether it's Simply the Best or the Perry the Platypus theme tune from Phineas and Ferb. You know, these things are called earworms. And today, I just thought we could dive into a little bit of what an earworm is, how they come about, and maybe possible cures of how to get rid of them. So, I started doing what all good people do when they want to look something up. I went on Google, and then I went to the wiki page for earworms. And apparently, earworms, or the definitive term, I guess, for earworms, is something that just gets stuck in your head. Usually a line or a phrase of a song that just repeats itself. And the way I see earworms is basically, you get the feeling you're not able to think about anything else. And it just keeps coming back to to you throughout the day. That's usually what an earworm is, and it can be quite annoying. I always remember this one day, uh, we had like an A-level mock for a maths test. And all I could think about was Duran Duran's Wild Boys, just like the drum pattern, like the do 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 you know, that bit. <laughs> Oddly enough, I failed that test. <laughs> but anyway, getting back on track. Um, so I tried to look up some of the reasons to why you get earworms to begin with. You know, what makes it get stuck in your head? And to be honest, there's no definitive answers. Well, none that I could find anyway. Some scientists have suggested um, it's just a trigger in your brain, something, maybe a, I don't know, you hear a certain beat and your brain tries to match that to a song you might know, or maybe it's just a lyric or a phrase that you associate with an emotion, which then then you relate to a song. So for example, if I said the words angels to you now, and you related that to a song, how many of you actually thought of angels by Robbie Williams then? Or maybe hallelujah by like Jeff Buckley, because that's quite a heavenly song, isn't it? And that's to do with angels. Personally, I heard the song Angel by Theory of a Dead Man. If you haven't listened to that, it's you should go and listen to it. It's a really good song. But yeah, it's just strange. I think it's interesting how like your brain just associates, I don't know, a certain word or a phrase, maybe a beat or a rhythm to a certain song. Maybe that's why it gets stuck in your head. Uh, also, I looked up a lot of popular songs. If, so, if a song's quite popular, that seems to also be a trigger for an earworm as well. So if you hear a song on the radio with a catchy riff like, I don't know, uh, what's it, Harry Styles' new song Lights Up, you might get that stuck in your head. Or maybe if you like a bit of Whitney as well, chances are that's going to get stuck in your head as well. Now, I'm really curious how the brain works. I, I mean, I'm not smart enough to do a degree in neurology or psychology. There's too much writing for me to personally. I quite like, I like to call myself a selective dyslexic, which means I'm just bad at spelling basically. So I can't do them kinds of degrees or anything like that. But I do like to know what triggers these earworms or I'd be really curious or if it's related to anything. So I did a little dig in and turns out there is a link between earworms and anxiety. So if you're a little stressed, I don't know, maybe from work or having to wait in a line for ages, or maybe go into Weatherspoons and they don't have any chips, so you can't have the loaded chips that you've been craving all day. You know, the important things in life. Uh, then you're more likely to get something stuck in your head or in your brain. And that makes sense, I guess, because if you think about it, anxiety and people who suffer from it, uh, they can get stuck in their own thoughts, repeating situations, overthinking things, and just never being able to resolve it, which creates more anxiety and just keeps lo- looping around like that. And I guess a similar thing happens when you've got S Club 7 screaming in your head, Reach for the stars. You know, that kind of stuff. It doesn't seem to end. It's terrifying. (laughs) There's a lot of so-called cures to stop an earworm. One way is to just listen to the song so you can physically hear the end. That way your brain resolves it. And that's that. Another thing that people have suggested is just chewing gum. It sounds dumb. Maybe a little daft when you first hear it. But hear me out. When you consider the fact that chewing gum reduces stress, then it seems more likely. Because if you're chewing on gum, then your brain assumes that you're eating. And when you're eating, your brain immediately thinks, oh, you're not in danger. And it tends to relax and de-stress a little bit. So maybe that's another way to get rid of an earworm. 
And a final suggestion that I keep seeing popping up is to do something that occupies your mind or distracts your mind a little bit. Something that isn't too easy for your brain to just like lose interest in, but not so hard to concentrate on that you just get frustrated with yourself. Just a balance of the two, I'd say. That could be working out in the gym like a gym lad, you know, or doing a puzzle that's manageable, but it's not like crazy hard. So I can't do crosswords, I hate them with a passion, because my mind just doesn't ever get the clues, ever, right? But I'll quite happily do a Sudoku, you know, so whatever works for you, I suppose. So, that's all the research I did on earworms today, it's a little rushed, I know, but my question for this week is, what is the last song you just couldn't get out of your head? Was it a bit of Ramstein, you know, or maybe something a bit softer like John Mayer? Let me know down below in the comments, it would be much appreciated. Now, keeping on with the topic of music, Spotify has recently released the stats for listeners and people are going nuts for it. Like, I'm seeing a lot of people's Instagrams and Snapchat stories going, ooh, look at this, it's so accurate. And I didn't think about it until I saw this meme of a single comment saying something along the lines of like, of course it is, it's literal data. I mean, whoever thought of that is an absolute genius because it's true, it is true. It is physical data of what you've been listening to over the year. So I thought I'd jump on the bandwagon and just share a few of my stats with you, or at least the ones I can remember anyway, because I didn't screenshot or save the video or anything like that. So this is all just based on memory. So I apologize if it's a little wrong. Starting with my number one band of the year, it's a band called Shinedown. Now, if you don't know who these people are, they're sort of like an alt-rock band. Something maybe you'd listen to on Kerrang, you know, that sort of feel. And I wasn't really surprised by this, I mean, I've listened to this band a lot. I'm not like a fangirl throwing my knickers at them obsessed, but I do like the music, you know, it's good music, and it clearly shows in their stats. Uh, one stat that did surprise me, however, though, was the fact that the genres had like all their bar charts and the one I've listened to the most this year was pop and I was like, seriously? Like, I'm not against pop or anything but most of my playlists, because I make a new playlist every month because I get bored of the songs essentially and it's usually filled with like rock or punk or 80s rock, 70s rock, you know maybe some older stuff but not usually pop Well, I wouldn't have said pop was the number one genre I listened to but then again, defining what a band or artist is these days is kind of hard because there's so many genres and sub-genres that it's hard to group or characterise music into one specific group. And when you do, it's all personalised and it's all subjective. What you might think is pop, somebody else might think is like, I don't know, soft rock or another kind of genre. I can't really think of anyone right now. But that's just an opinion. I wonder if anybody else agrees with me there. I don't know, I just think, find it very hard to characterise a particular song into one genre. Music's really broad, it's got a lot of variety to it, so who knows, who knows. So, moving on. The top five songs is something Spotify shows, and I can't remember all five, but I'm pretty sure number one was Shine Down 45. It's an absolute brilliant track, you should definitely go listen to that. And I think it was followed by something like Maroon 5, maybe, Sunday Morning? I do listen to that one a lot, I do like that song, it's just like a good throwback song, if you know what I mean. Ooh, Sunflower as well by, um, what was it, Sway Lee and Post Malone, because that's on the Spider-Verse track, Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack. I really like that soundtrack. Well, just that movie overall in general, to be honest with you, is, like from the animation being awesome to it just being nerdy. Oh, and Nicolas Cage as Spider-Noir, oh my god, it's a really good cast choice there. It's amazing how a movie like that came from Sony Animations, but then they also created the Angry Birds movies, and I'm like, that had such low scores and low reviews. How can you make a really good movie, but then also make a movie that's really bad? It's just, it sounds mental to me. Anyway, another song in my top five was Africa by Toto, because of course it is. It's a brilliant song, you know. And it's got really popular over the last few years, like, I've got no idea what's caused this, like, spike in popularity of the song. But it's kind of become a classic song that people freak out to every time they hear it. Like, when people hear, on, hear Come On Eileen, you know, you just hear the waves of cheers and whees and the yes from the entire bloody room. Now, I don't particularly like the song. I think it's a bit overplayed and it's, I just don't think it's a very good song. But that's just my opinion. All I'm saying is, it's definitely not on my Spotify stats at all this year. And uh, speaking of the years, 
It's cool how Spotify kind of showed you like how much music you've been listening to over the past few years. So in 2019, for my stats anyway, apparently I've listened to 110,000 minutes of music, which I did the math for, and that's about 1,800 hours of music, which equates to about 76 days of listening to music. Now, I'm not sure if that counts like offline minutes as well. I imagine it does, otherwise mine would probably be like 120,000, maybe even more. That's actually insane thinking about it. Like, that's a lot of time. Just think what you could do or achieve in that amount of time. I'd probably eat a lot of Freddos to be honest with you. If I tried hard enough, I could eat a lot of Freddos. The possibilities though are endless. So, that was my Spotify stats for the year. What do yours look like? Is yours filled with Take That and Westlife? Or maybe is it some more Frank Sinatra and Louis Armstrong? If you want to share them, then let me know down below in the comments. Or you could answer my question for this week, which was, what was the last song you got stuck in your head? But thank you guys for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast. And I'll see you next time. Oh, and enjoy a cuppa.